Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. The text for our thought today as we continue the journey through the book of Luke is Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. I want to take us just back down to uh, the parable a section of that text, verse 20 and 21. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up trades for himself, who is not rich toward God. So far our text. When I read this text and this parable, and, and we remember once again that a, a parable is a unique uh, form that Jesus used to teach. And as we go through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we find that Jesus taught more in parables than any other form. And a parable is an earthly story, something happening here, that has a heavenly meaning, and that there's only really one point of comparison in any parable. When I read this parable, though, I come to something that years ago just bothered me. God said to him, fool. I said, come on, God. That's pretty harsh. Other times, Jesus called people brood of vipers, filthy sepulchers, other, other terms. But this one, fool bothered me. And it bothers me because none of us likes to be called a fool. It's an offensive term. It hits hard. It, it cuts. So I looked it up in the dictionary, and the word fool is defined as a person who acts unwisely, one who lacks good sense or judgment. Fool. When we start thinking about it and, and where we're at in our lives and where we're at in our faith journey, where we're at in our walk with the Lord, we really have to ask ourselves, what is our view of life? How do we view life? Jesus says to this one in the parable, he says, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You're a fool. What's your view of life? When you look at yourself and you look at your own journey, whether you're 15 years old or 50 years old or 65 or 75 or 85 or 90, whatever it is, what's your view of life? Is your focus in your life the accumulation of things or being rich toward God? Where do you spend your focus? Where do you put your time? Where do you put your effort? Where do you put your talent? Is it in taking care of yourself? Accumulating all this stuff? Or is it in being rich toward God? I've said for a number of years, and some of you might remember me saying it, that, you know, I've done hundreds of funerals during my pastoral ministry, and I've yet to see a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. Until yesterday. Yesterday, my son Aaron sent me from Washington a picture, and he says, Dad, you've got to see this one. And here's this long, white funeral coach, hearse, and it's got a U-Haul attached behind it. Where's your emphasis? Is it on the accumulation of things? Or is it being rich toward God? That's the question that ends up in this parable, and it really comes down to the crux of our life, the crossroads of our life. Where do we put our emphasis? Where do we put our hearts. Does life consist in the abundance of your possession? God calls such a person who has that emphasis a fool. This man in this parable could not see beyond this world. 
He sits back and he's accumulated all this wealth. And he says, now I'm going to sit back and I'm going to be happy. Merry. Celebrating. But then the word comes to him and says, full tonight. This moment. Your soul is required of you. Then whose will these be? He never looked beyond the world. He only looked for here and now. He only looked for what was going on at this point. What Jesus is saying is that we need to be aware and beware of covetousness. Now we have to think about that word covet. It's in our commandments. We're not to covet people. We're not to covet things. Now there's a difference between healthy wants and coveting. Let me illustrate it this way. You see a brand new 2017 red Corvette. And you say, Boy, I'd like to have one of those. You know, last week I told you I wanted a black Porsche. That's for making quick hospital calls. This week it's a red Corvette. But you think about it, I want a red Corvette. Or, or, or maybe it's that 57 Chevy, you know, with all of that sparkly paint job and the white tuck and roll interior. Maybe it's something else like that. You say, I'd like to have it. And then you start figuring out how you can buy one like it. Or maybe you can buy that one. And you talk to that person. You try to negotiate a deal to buy it. Well, that's a healthy want. Covetousness is to say, I want that one. And I'm going to figure a way, even if I have to con, cheat, lie, steal, to take it away from them. When you start placing your desire that way, that's coveting. So Jesus is telling us this parable to be aware and beware of all covetousness. Think about what Jesus has done. Jesus became poor to make us rich. He who is the King of kings, who is the Lord of lords, who is El Shaddai, God Almighty, who has everything and gives us everything, he left heaven, took on flesh and blood, and became a human being. He didn't just appear to be a human being. He was a real, authentic, walking, talking, seeing, thinking human being. He became flesh and blood, humbled himself, and then he became obedient to the Father's will, even to death, death on a cross. That he gave up the riches of the kingdom of heaven to come to be in our midst so that we might be saved. He did not covet anything. In fact, as we look at our Lord's life, you know, it's kind of unique. He never owned a house. He never had a Corvette or a Porsche. He maybe not even had two pairs of sandals. We go into our closets, and how many pairs of shoes do you have? How many pieces of jewelry do you own? How many television sets do you have in your house? How many game boards? How many computers? Well, you know, I have to have my computer. I have to have my laptop. I have to have my iPad. I have to have... And we live our life that way. Jesus gave up everything in the kingdom to dwell amongst us full of grace and truth. How do we become rich toward God? We're rich toward God when we see beyond ourselves. I like what a friend of mine, Pastor Jim Riber, had in his study at his church long time ago, he had a big sign, and I always liked it. I wanted it. No, I didn't covet it. I wanted it. And it said this, old English letters, perspective. 
Number one, there is a God. Number two, you're not it. That helps us have perspective. And it starts helping us to think about how are we rich toward God? We are rich toward God when we go and think beyond ourselves. That we are not in control of everything. In fact, we are really not in control of a whole lot. But God has been rich toward us and has blessed us and given us so much. Years ago, I was walking through the church I was at at that time. And an elderly pastor in our congregation came walking down the aisle or down the hallway. And he was walking with a cane. He was about six foot three, weighed about 155, 160 pounds at that time. He had had two surgeries for cancer. He had radiation. He had chemo. And he was walking real slow, and he would lost a lot of weight. And I stopped him to talk to him. I said, Pastor Prang, how are you doing? Now, mindful, I had in my mind, he was going to tell me about his health. He was telling me, you know, how he was doing. You know, he's going to say, I'm hurting. I'm taking this. I'm doing that. And he stopped and he taught this young man at that time <laughs> a lesson. He leaned on his cane and he reached up and he kind of stroked that long angular chin with those thin bony fingers. And he says, well, I can walk. I can talk. I can see. I can think. I can hear. God has richly blessed me. Have a blessed day. And from that time forth, I remembered it. And now that people ask me, they say, Pastor, how are you? And I respond, what? Blessed. I got up this morning. I wasn't looking at the roots of the grass. I got up and I could put on my own shoes. I'm blessed. I've never forgotten that lesson. How are we rich toward God? Are we focused on our own belongings and our own things and our own stuff? Or are we looking beyond ourselves and how God has been rich toward us? Let's apply this text. It becomes a little bit, if you would, looking at priorities. Years ago, I read of a painting. I don't know who the artist was that illustrated this text. You, you looked at the painting, and here is the picture of a room. And this man is sitting at table. Now take a look at the picture on your bulletin. He's sitting there. He's got all of these riches. He's got all of this gold and stuff piled up in front of him. And then you look over the man's shoulder, and you look out, and here are the fields. They're very lush. There are fat cattle in the fields. There's beautiful trees with fruit hanging from them. Sun shining, it's glorious. But then the artist did something interesting. You take that canvas and you turn it around, and there's another picture. Same scene, same room, same man, same pile of gold. But this time there's a darkness about everything. The man is sitting there, and there are cobwebs going to the pile of gold. You look out past him in the window. There are bones laying in the, these devastated fields. The barns have collapsed. Everything is cloudy and dark. And then you see in this picture, to the side of this man, there's a shadowy figure, kind of a hooded figure, and he's looking at the man, shaking a finger, and his mouth is pursed, he's saying, fool. That's the question we have to ask ourselves. As we hear this text, are we focused on what we possess? Are we focused on what we're doing? If you notice in this text, this man says a number of things. He says, my gold, you know, my goods, my barns, my self. But then Jesus refers to him as foolish, unwise, covetous. So when we apply it today, we have to ask ourselves, am I focused on my possession? And I, me, mine, myself? 
Or am I being rich toward God? When I'm looking beyond myself, I'm looking to God, and I'm looking to my eternal destiny and where God is leading me. Our salvation is solely dependent upon faith alone in Jesus Christ. Not in what we have done, not in what we own, not in our bank account, not in our investments, not in all the stuff that we keep tucking away and saying, we got to move, we got to have a bigger house to put all that stuff in it. But to say, I'm looking towards God. And I understand that because of His grace, that now I am saved through faith alone in Jesus Christ. And now I can look beyond and I can share with others. So this week as you live your life, find a moment, find a time, find a place to touch others and to share. Share the good news of Jesus Christ because we are rich in what He has done and now we can share that richness with others. And with that, all God's people can say, Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds and faith in Jesus Christ to life everlasting with Him. Amen. I invite you as you're able to rise as we speak.